So I'm back here with another interview, and I'm interviewing a man I interviewed before, but this time, as a Dana White Contender Series <laughs> fighter, I'm here with Mr. Quillen Southfield, uh, sorry, who's going to be getting his uh, opportunity to fight for a UFC contract on September 3rd against Gouge Young. How are you going, Quillen? Hey, Benny. Going very well. So how do you see this fight with your opponent going? How much tape have you watched on him? What do you, what were his big uh, holes in his game or what are some of his big strengths in his game? Like what have you noticed about him watching his fights? I've watched his, not his last fight, but the two fights before. I can't find his his latest one. So I'm on a bit of a, bit of a hunt for, for that footage. From what I've seen, I don't know. I don't think he poses too much, say, like, finishing threat. I think just with the, the guys he fought, I think they just made big mistakes. Plus, you know, the guys he fought are pretty are pretty old and I think past their their prime on their way out. So I think it's going to be all, you know, I think it's going to be all fireworks for me in this fight. Yeah, definitely. I did. I watched one of his fights. It might have been his second last fight that he had or maybe his last one but it was against a guy who was literally 40 years old and i think he was like five and five yeah like it's, <laughs> yeah i know yeah i seen i was like it's not the best competition for him so it's it's hard to see how good he actually is if it's just you know his opponents might may have made him look better than what he actually is yeah no definitely like i feel like just because mm. like yeah, he's he's finishing these guys, but like you would also finish these exact same guys. Like it's like any I, like yeah. I feel like if anyone's UFC level, they would be destroying these guys. But even like non UFC level yeah. guys would probably also be destroying these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Uh, now looking at him, like, would you say like he's probably his big like big edge is probably in power. Like that's probably his way if he was to win would to be maybe catch you or something like that. Cause it doesn't watching it. It doesn't seem like his wrestling or his like jujitsu or anything else is like really much of a threat compared to the hands. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I find that's probably his only chance is early on in the fight before we start to fatigue is to, you know, catch me with a, a massive shot. That's only if I, if I was to, you know, lapse in terms of my, you know, my judgment, but that's, you know, hundred percent, that's not going to happen. So once, once the first few minutes pass, it's going to be all, all me. I think after the first grappling exchange, you know, he'll, he'll wilter. Yeah. And did you actually see his interview with James Lynch? Did you watch any of that or see any of the highlights? I never watched that one. I, I've been, I intended to, to watch that, but I, I never did. Not his interview. Well, the interview where he, where he come out and said pretty much who he's fighting, which is me. Yeah. Is that the one you're so talking about? In that interview, yeah. yeah, I never he, watched that. So in that interview, he actually said that he thinks that he, he's, he's got a bigger heart than you and he thinks he's going to outdog you pretty much. That's what he said. He thinks he's, yeah. he said that he's going <laughs> to break you in that fight. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see who's going to do the breaking in this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not your first time. I don't you know. even, yeah, I don't even think he'll get to that point really. I think it's gonna be, you know, after early on in the fight, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch him and finish him. So it won't even get to the point where who's gonna have to we're gonna te- we're gonna have to like test our willpower. It's just gonna be, you know, checkmate. Yeah, no, I love to hear that, man. I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super, I'm super, super excited for this fight because when I went and watched his fights, you know, I went back and watched a lot of them, and I like, I think this is like a fighter who matches you match up really well against. Like, I just think it's a good stylistic matchup for you, and not just yeah. a good stylistic matchup. I think a good stylistic matchup for you to have like an entertaining, like yeah. masterclass type performance. In my non-biased opinion, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. The someone's, you know, a little bit shorter. That shorter, stockier type uh, fighter it favors the hands. So I think on the feet, from the outside, using my kickboxing prowess against him, it's going to be, you know, I think I'm going to put on some some highlight-worthy, you know, combos on him. Yeah, and like, yeah. where were you when you like got this call and opportunity? Like, what was the like, what was your reaction? And yeah, just I want to just talk me through when you got the call for Dana White contender series. Uh, 
my manager Jasmine, she picked me up and she pretty much I knew something was up. She um she told me to give her a phone, my phone, and then she started filming. She said, like, read that. And she had an email from Sean. It was this was like a few weeks after my last fight with Don Marthan. And yeah, pretty much said that he's gonna put me on the contender series for this, you know, for this season. And then it was about a couple months of just like waiting and then and then finally got the the email back with the matchup with the date and yeah i was you know over the moon but at the same time i was kind of i was kind of expecting it so it wasn't too too surreal i I built it up in my head that i knew this was the time yeah absolutely like i think anyone who you know has an eye for talent knew that after that Don Mar uh, Don Mar fan fight that it was almost certainly that you were going to get a shot yeah. on the NY Contender Series, and I'm glad that you did because obviously you deserve it. You've, yeah, there's not really too much left for you to do without, like you know, to get a shot. Like you've done everything there is to do. You've beaten yeah. all the best guys, you know, besides maybe a few, but like still, I think you're definitely like UFC level, yeah. and you definitely deserve it. You know. Yeah. But, thank uh, you. Yeah. I. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I know I'm ready for this. Yeah, no, and like looking looking at it, like it's a it's a pretty good time for like Australian MMA fighters right now. Obviously, mm. you've, you're getting the shot. Your teammate Cody Haddon's getting the shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just Australia, New Zealand in general. All the talent seems to be getting their their shot at the big show, which is good. And I, I imagine because they're going to be doing more events in Australia, it's going to be really good for you guys. Uh, to get as much fights as possible, especially, you know, you and Cody, who maybe not so much you since you've got the belt, but I'd imagine before you got the belt, it was probably a bit hard to match you up. I know for Cody, it's been a bit of a hassle to get him opponents. Yeah. Yeah, Cody's been, yeah, he's probably the hardest guy for uh, Jasmine, our manager, to to match. You know, it seems that no one wants to fight him, which I understand I wouldn't want to fight him if I was bound to rate them. Like, that's, that's a... That's a hell of a fight for anyone. Yeah, definitely. I remember you saying he's mm. he might be the he might be two weight class or smaller, but he does give you your hardest rounds of the gym. Which yeah, he's like, the hardest round every every session. He's one hundred percent the hardest round in the gym in no matter what you know aspect discipline. You know, sparring day, see him walk in. It's like okay, it's going to be <laughs> going to get some hard rounds in today. Yeah, and I got fifteen kilos on him walking around. So. Yeah, that just speaks to his, you know, for how how good he is. Yeah, definitely. And is there any chance that like your fight uh, and his fight are on the same card, or is it confirmed like you guys are fighting different different events? Yeah, we're we're fighting different events. It would be, yeah, man, it would be like dream come true if it was yeah. on the same, the same actual card. Like I've actually said this before that it was like ideal scenario would be both of us to be on the same. The same contender series card and both get our contracts at the the exact same time but we're just going to be you know a couple of weeks separated so at the end of the day it doesn't doesn't really matter it's still roughly the same time it's cool we get to start our actual ufc journey roughly around the same time yeah definitely are you are you two going to be in yeah. each other's corners for your fights on the contender series um not sure about the corner i would like to go over for for his fight and i think he wants to stay back for mine because he's on earlier oh uh, yeah but uh, yeah so i think it, it might be hard to stay for for that long so but uh, yeah you know we'll see when we we get a bit closer yeah definitely uh and yeah it's just it's also for your coach Ramel, like it, it must be a crazy mm. journey for him to watch you guys like pretty much grow up in the sport. Yeah. And now you're both, you know, you're both like heading to the big show. Like, yeah, just talk to me about Ramel's reaction to you both of you getting the shot. Yeah, it's cool. I love watching Ramel's reaction to to anything is, you know, always fun, whether it's, you know, happy or surreal. Like yeah, I'm so I'm so happy we've got to this point for him because, you know, he's put uh, so much time and effort into into us as athletes. So seeing it pay off, all his handiwork has now reached, you know, pretty much the the highest level of the game. You know, it's a it's a really you know good feeling for the soul. 
Yeah, definitely, man. And yeah, he just he does deserve like all the all his flowers because yeah. yeah, you can tell he like he puts in a lot of work yeah. to yeah. Like, help you yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he does. You know, all the time. Oh, so I'm just saying, um, you know, there's lots of times where he probably shouldn't even be at the gym. He's always, you know, he's got bad gout, so he's always. I can't remember the last time I've seen him walk into the gym without a limp either in his knee or his ankles, so you know, no matter what, he's always, you know, pushing through, getting into the gym, making sure that we're, you know, we're doing all the right things. Yeah. You can like, you can just tell he's very dedicated to you. Like all you guys mm. at the gym, like, yeah, you yeah. can, yeah. He's very passionate. Like, you know, mo- obviously most coaches do go where like all their fighters are going, but it seems like he's traveling almost every weekend for, you know, all the guys at LCA. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely yeah, happy. He's too. busy man. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Very <laughs> busy, uh, but so if you were to, you know, all goes well, you get like a say, maybe, you know, you don't take too much damage. When would you like to debut for your UFC debut uh, after you beat Young? Ideally, yeah, obviously, depending on how uh, banged up I get. Ideally, December or late November, that gives a good you know time frame for an actual camp. But if I come out, you know, totally unscathed, I'm I'm happy to fight, you know, like a month later. I've always said that I wanted to get into the UFC before the age of 25. Ideally now have my first actual fight before the age of 25, which is uh, my birthday is on 28th of December. That's when I turned 25. So pretty much any time before that, I'd like to have my UFC debut. Yeah, that would, that would be sick, man. Yeah. And like, obviously you know, your debut, you can't really pick opponents or anything like that. But we did, yeah. last time we spoke, we talked about how there were some guys you think you could beat. Has there been any fights you've watched lately where you're like, fuck, I would love to like, you know, I'd love to beat that person up. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I don't really care who who I get matched up against. Just, you know, anyone really. I just want to just want to get in there and, and show off in front of everyone in the UFC. Yeah, definitely. Like, and you know, in the lightweight division, you know, obviously there was just a title fight. Did you catch the UFC title fight between just, uh, Dustin Poirier and Islam Makhachev? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was a it was a good fight. Yeah, what did you did you notice? Like anything in there that you could maybe you know, Islam probably won't be champion by the time you get at the top. But you never know, man, with these things. But is there anything that you see where yeah. you're like, I'd love to, I'd love to test myself. Like, I'd love yeah, to fight. it would. It would be cool to you know reach that level and then get to fight those guys but yeah like you said like all those guys at the top of the lightweight division they're all like on their way out like yeah islam poirier um Oliveira, and like yeah gaichi like all them guys are you know they're kind of at their peak probably you know gonna go past it pretty soon so you know by the four or five years by the time i get to that you know the upper echelon of the division, I'm pretty sure they'll be on their way out. They'll probably be, you know, like guys like Armin Sarukin as yeah. a champ that I'll have to, you know, compete against. So I don't yeah. really look at these guys now as like potential opponents because I just assume that they're going to be, you know, they're going to be out the door by the time I get there. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree yeah. with that. And I, I'm glad you brought up Armin uh, Sarukin because that, that's actually what I was going to say. I would imagine he'll probably be champion, like somebody like yeah. him or uh or by or i don't know if you've seen or by the kajizikstan guy uh there, there's all the memes about him being he's like, all the like, caveman memes is yeah, that, guy? Yeah, yeah, that guy oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that guy yeah he looks yeah, like think, he has a hard head <laughs> yeah yeah he, he fucking yeah. looks like he can take a shot and a half that's for yeah sure. yeah <laughs> yeah I, I feel like it's gonna be guys like because he might look mm. really old but he's only like 24 25 as well like yeah. that guy mm. But like I feel like it's gonna be guys like you know Orobai, maybe Sarukian. Uh, I feel like that's gonna be the guys at the top when you get there. Like, how do you how do you like see yourself going against them guys? And I see myself hanging in there, you know, with them at this point in time. And I know, you know, with the couple of years, you know, I have to improve. I think I'm gonna be, you know, some special and and having those guys compete against me is gonna be. You know, very, very tough day in the office for them. Yeah, definitely. I, I yeah. think you've Armin especially would be really sick just because you yeah. both 
you know, you've got very good sprawls. I mentioned it last time I interviewed yeah. the sprawling <laughs> game is fucking elite, man. I feel like that would be real. Like, mm. I feel like he'd go for a lot of takedowns, but I feel like you'd be able to, like, uh, like slip out of them, man, just because you're so, yeah, it'd like, be, elusive. There'd be some cool grappling exchanges. I'd love to, you know, if, if I was to fight Armin, it'd be cool to have some, you know, six scrambles with him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and did, what did you think of Armin's performance against Charles Oliveira? It was cool. It was it was really good. It was um, yeah, it was very sharp. And I actually had Oliveira winning that one. I think just the heart wanted to, wanted him to win. I really like Oliveira. <laughs> just this just his style. Like it's so it's really clean. It looks really nice, which is what I like to see in a fight. Like I love you know a good old scrap where they're just slugging. But when I see someone compete and they everything they do, their technique just looks flawless. That's my that's my favorite thing to actually watch. Yeah, definitely. Like the way he's yeah. very great punches and stuff like that as well. When he's yeah. moving forward, his striking is just very like aesthetically pleasing to watch. Yeah, like, yeah. And then yeah, even yeah, his jiu jitsu, he makes jiu jitsu fun. Like some people say jiu jitsu is boring, but not when Charles Oliveira is fighting. Yeah, he just. When you're constantly on the attack, even when you're like off your back, it's it's super exciting. As long as there's you know constant flow and movement, grappling's super exciting, man. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. Uh, your teammate uh, Alex Torres, he's got very fun, like yeah, very fun with his scrambling and his grappling. Yeah, I really like watching him fight. Yeah, he has a a good mix of like jujitsu and and wrestling, knowing when to you know fight for top position and when to you know kind of have a bit of fun and and throw up some submissions and yeah he's uh he's cool to watch i like watching him fight yeah definitely i enjoyed his yeah. he had a good performance uh the last eternal card so that was pretty sick. yeah yeah speaking of eternal obviously eternals today uh what by the time we're filming this interview so i wanted to get your like prediction for some of the lightweight fights uh that are going to be happening for the next few months uh so first we have don mar fan versus tim rogers obviously former opponent don mar fan so how do you think that fight's going to go yeah, I think Dom takes that one. I think he's too, you know, he's too, I say, like, mature in terms of competing with high-level guys. The other guy, Tim Rogers, he looks a bit, I don't know, he looks a bit, like, out of shape, I think. Like, for a, for a lightweight, you should be, you know, real lean. And although he's not, like, you know, fat, I think he should be a bit more, you know, in shape for a lightweight. So I think Dom, my fans, is going to be a bit too, you know, big and strong and once – Dom latches onto him, I think it's going to be, you know, game over. Yeah, I'd say, because I haven't really watched much of Tim Rogers, admittedly, but he does, yeah. like, look, he's sort of built like Sean Strickland. I feel like like if Strickland was that lightweight, I feel like that's the best way you could describe yeah. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah, he's, like, got a bit of a belly, so maybe he could probably be a featherweight or something like that, but I guess maybe yeah, he's I think, more yeah. healthy there. Yeah, I agree. And then... Uh, Harry Webb will be fighting uh, David Martinez in the August cars more than likely. I wanted to get your thoughts on that mm. matchup. I think that'll be a, I think that'll be a tough matchup for for both of them. Like Martinez is very hittable, so if Webb was to you know catch catch David, you know I think it's going to be lights out. But then again, we haven't really seen Webb be pushed in like the grappling department with someone. You know, with the caliber of like Martinez, he's going to be constantly like pressuring forward, shooting takedowns, and just trying to trying to smother. And I know Martinez's like grappling game is very like suffocating. So I think that'll be a hard one to actually call until you know, till the actual fight is playing out. I think it's going to be a a good test for for Harry Webb. But if I was to put money on it, I'd probably put Harry Webb just with the you know the power of youth. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, mm. definitely taking a lot less damage than uh, David at this point. Yeah, David's just mm. like, he yeah. is tanks for all these shots, but like, man, the damage yeah. has got to catch up with him eventually. Yeah. yeah. I like his fight against Wes Kappa uh, the other week was, was really cool. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed watching that fight. Yeah, that was a, that was a fucking sick fight. Like, yeah, I loved his cool elbow. Fight. Like, it yeah. seems like he's uh, worked on his striking a lot because, yeah, he was, he was yeah. landing a lot of good shots on Wes on the feet, which I was <clears> yeah. sort of surprised about. Yeah. yeah, and it was and it was because of the, the threat of the takedown. Like it makes you hesitate a bit on the feet, and then you know you fake, and then you actually throw strikes. The guy who's expecting a takedown is not expecting you to actually stand and bang. So a lot of those times, you know, 
as a grappler, you just end up out striking the, say, like the kickboxer, which is like Alex, my teammate Alex in his last fight, he couldn't take the guy down. But, you know, when you look at the scorecards, he landed more strikes than him because his opponent was thinking about the takedown the whole time, defending it. So when Alex would actually throw strikes, and he's not a striker, as you can see, yeah. it, was, it was out striking him. He was just like landing more because old mate didn't expect him to actually throw something. So having that takedown threat really improves, you know, your ability to actually land punches and kicks. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, even <laughs> like best example is probably Habib versus Kono is when he landed that wild yeah. overhand and dropped him. Yeah. Like, yeah, Fake that takedown. overhand, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even That's even it, against yeah. uh, Donnelly, did you? Sh- I can't remember. Did you like feint to take down before you landed that overhand on him? No, I didn't. I just slipped the inside of the the jab. <clears throat> That's right. So I, was, yeah. I was waiting for that jab, so I was waiting for like kind of like that perfect moment, and then yeah, it just it just come that early. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was because I, yeah. I was trying to remember maybe like that because you. I feel like any person <clears throat> you're gonna fight, you're probably gonna have a takedown like. Uh, like the, the takedown threat's going to be there. So it's yeah. definitely going to be very beneficial for your yeah. striking as well. Yeah. It may have been in the back of his mind. He might have thought I was going to shoot you know, like straight away. But yeah. I was I was happy to play a little bit on the feet before, you know, just waiting for the, the right timing. I was planning good- to wrestle in that fight too. So yeah. I was going to play a bit and then just, yeah, find the moment. I wasn't just going to shoot straight off the bat. But, yeah. Yeah, definitely played out. I mean, he, yeah. he's a guy who yeah. went to like a decision with Conor Ben in like amateur boxing. So that's like, you know, yeah. using MMA math, you knocked him out in the first round. Conor Ben. It's, a, it's a good chip on my shoulder. It's a good chip on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I knock out the boxers and I submit the jiu jitsu guys. So that's a, I don't know why. It's just, yeah, it's pretty funny how that, that works yeah. out. Yeah. And you yeah. out grapple the Sambo guy. So yeah, that's like, I don't, I don't understand how that. <laughs> So looking at it, you're probably <clears throat> yeah, going to knock funny. out. Uh, you're probably going to knock Young out then, in probably in the first round. Then, since yeah. you like to take everyone else's <clears throat> game. Yeah, yeah, I can give them the you know taste of their own medicine. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I was like looking at it, like obviously you had the Muay Thai fights, you got the wrestling background, mm. you got good submissions. Like it is, it is awesome that you've got. You probably got the most well-rounded game, I'd say, in Australia, mm. like right now, probably. Yeah, I agree, man. I, you know, I work really hard on you know, all disciplines. I find I train all of them, you know, quite quite evenly with the amount of time I actually put in. And yeah, I love just you know all aspects. I go through phases in times like one week where I'm more, you know, more excited about doing all the the striking stuff. Then the next week I'm more excited about doing all the wrestling or the jujitsu stuff. So, you know, it depends on how I'm feeling. It's probably and I say what more effort I put into each each discipline, but it's a quite an even, you know, cycle. Yeah, definitely. I know Jack <laughs> Jenkins spoke about this, but he said that when he trains mostly just striking, then that 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 he he like feels like he's less better at the grappling. Obviously, it does make sense, but you know, some people it's different. Do you feel like if you train mostly striking, then your wrestling by the time fight night comes around is a bit weaker, or you just always got the same level of wrestling and striking? Sometimes I feel the opposite. Like, I don't know why. Like, sometimes I was like, if I do a heap of striking stuff, then when I, you know, say I, I spar, then when I start grappling, it feels even, even better and like vice versa. It's like the mini, it's like a mini, like psychological break from it. And then when you come back, you just feel like fresh. So it's weird. Like for me, it's the, feels like the opposite. It's like if I have like a little injury and it's like, okay, I can't grapple for the next week or two. Then when I come back, first session back, you know, a lot of people would say that they they don't feel good. They might take them a few to, you know, to get back. But for me, sometimes it's, I feel I feel better. Like I just come back all fresh and I feel great. Yeah, definitely. Like I mean, yeah. if that if that's the case, like you're coming back. I think not the longest layoff, but you you know you had a bit of a. I think it's February a little bit, was, yeah. was February when you fought last. I think that's what was it March. <clears throat> yeah, February. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so just going to be quite a quite a long time. So. But it's yeah. not, you know, a long time. It's not like a, a year out. And I'm but, and I'm always training in the gym, so it's all yeah. 
Yeah, but I feel like because you've been off and, you know, you say that like a break from things, you come back better. I would imagine you're just going to come back and probably have like an amazing performance with the time off. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd perform worse if I fought back to back to back, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, no close proximity to each other. I think the longer I have off, the better I get. I don't know why. Yeah, definitely. Was there at any point, yeah. was there like a, was there talk? Of you and Josh Togo for like that August card before you got the Dana White and you know he went to PFL. Was there like talks of that fight happening? Nah, I think, and nah, I think I was expecting the winner out of him and who did fight for Becker? Becker, yeah. Went, yeah. And then I'm pretty sure I heard him say he's got something. And then I heard like a week later that he's going to go off to PFL. Before that, I did expect expect that, but at the same time, I was also expecting contender series, so I wasn't really, you know, too focused on on the local scene. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, like, if you could compare Young to any of your like previous opponents, who would you compare him the most to with his skill set yeah. and size and everything? Um, maybe. More close towards Nico Fleeces. But Nico was Southpaw. So I'd say that Gage is a say just a a younger version of Nico and Orthodox. Yeah, I could see that. Both like sort yeah. of brick ha- brick shit houses, like when they're both short, yeah. smaller guys and that like smaller, stockier, stockier yeah. favor the hands. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like that's a good call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and looking at like how would you compare like his power? Would you say it's probably, uh, I'd imagine the most powerful guy you fought before is probably either him or Baeda, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably Nico is probably the most, I say like powerful power yeah. guy I've fought, but at the same time with the, the, with Gage, I know he doesn't, when he throws punches, it doesn't look real like powerful, even though he like, he finishes the guys on the feet. You know, I like the – probably say it's due to the, the guys, like, uh, mistakes defensively that he fought, and they're – plus they're, like, they're ancient as well, those guys. So <laughs> True, I've yeah. seen, like, one, he, like, he overextended so much, and then he just got clipped, and then he was – it was it was done. So I'm not sure. It's going to be hard to say until he actually, you know, hits me in the cage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Let's just hope, uh, let's sometimes, hope it's it's, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes guys look like they hit hard, but they don't, or they're just like people, they just touch her. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we're going to have to see. And ho- hopefully you don't get to hit too much anyway. Hopefully it's, you know, no. flip, <laughs> flip, don't get hit. And fucking yeah, get that's it. it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, man, on like his level of competition. It's not being the strongest. It's it is hard when guys don't fight the highest level guys. Mm. Like obviously I'd say your level of competition like shits all over his man. Like yeah. like Blake Donnelly, Domar fan, all them guys are like fucking so much better than any of the guys he's fought. Like and that's not even me being yeah. biased, it's just like an objective fact, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think it's the the level here. It's a bit more like in Australia, there's obviously there's a less there's less people actually fighting. So at the high level, everyone's kind of you know like real good. Yeah. Versus you know over in the states, there's a lot of you know there'd be a good mix of good guys and a and heap of shit guys as well. So depending on who you fight, he probably doesn't even know the level of the guys he's fighting going in because there's probably so many of them. Yeah, definitely. And his the yeah. organization he fought for as well, like FAC, like. I don't know. They've literally, I swear they've hidden F- FAC 17, which is the one he lost on. I literally, Yeah, I I'll be trying to look for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like lost media, I swear. I've been looking everywhere. Like, it said that it was on Fight Pass as well, but, like, it's literally not yeah. on there. I don't know where the fuck it's gone. They've yeah, literally... they've, they've hidden it. They've tried to erase that loss. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. weird, man. Like, I've never seen that before with, like, mm. uh, any, like, fight cards on Fight Pass before. Like, I don't know what could have happened for them to hide it, but I've looked on Facebook, I've looked on YouTube, I've looked on Fight Pass, Twitter, everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah, literally all I could find was the highlights uh, of the guy who beat him. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, thanks for sending me that. That was actually a good, uh, yeah, uh, that was yeah, good video. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah because I, I was like if i can't find it you know and i i don't have like it's, you guys don't have as much free time as me uh yeah so i'm like you know I, if i can't find it then i imagine <laughs> you guys probably can't find it either so you know i'll nah. let me send you and ramel and see if uh if you guys have seen it before yeah might have to message his opponent he might have a, a video of it might have to yeah message and ask for it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Be like, yeah, message him. Hey, you all right if I uh, have some clips of your fight so I can make your win look shitter? Like, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, definitely odd man. Mm. I wonder if that's the promotion because I know James Cross was his coach and he did run the promotion at one point. I wonder if that was uh, him. Like, yeah. I wonder if that's him. Like, yeah. mm, I don't want there to be any tape out there for my guy, so I'm just gonna make yeah, you we... get rid of the whole car. Yeah. yeah, some dodgy stuff with old Kraus there. Yeah. yeah definitely man i mm, yeah like Wouldn't i don't know. Him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe young's gonna take a dive who knows now nah. yeah uh, <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. weird situation with that whole thing but yeah he's out of that gym because yeah. i know yeah. apparently laura sanko spoke about him being like pretty like hyped up prospect or something before in the past yeah. but i haven't seen it myself yeah yeah i've, I've heard the the same thing as well yeah, which uh, just makes the win win's going to be much better for you, man. Like, yeah, he, he could yeah, be exactly. the best I want to take the hype, take the hype yeah. away and add it to my own. So, uh, yeah, it's all all good news for me. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, he could be yeah. the best prospect in America, but, like, you're the best prospect one of Australia, man. So it's, like, yeah, just yeah. going to show the level of Australia and WA in general. Like, West Australians yeah. are, like, killing her right now. Yeah, we are. Mm. Yeah, man. Uh but yeah, so obviously, are you gonna attend the UFC three hundred five card like as a fan? Because obviously you won't be able to fight on it. But are you gonna yeah, attend? yeah, I wanna, I wanna go as a fan and you know enjoy the show and you know like to visualize myself, you know stepping in there and the maybe on the next card that that comes by it seems to be once a year. So you know twenty twenty five UFC Perth, I'd love to get on. So. Yeah, but for this time, I'm going to be attending as a fan. Yeah, definitely. And do you have, like, yeah. a prediction for Israel Adesanya versus Drukas Duplessis? Yeah, I think that's a hard one. I think Israel's going to come back with a you know, a bit of a chip on his shoulder and he's going to he's gonna look good. But I think Drukas is a hard fight for anyone. Just his pressure and, yeah. you know, you can tell he's just super strong. He's like a bull. Like, when he grabs a hole. Like, when, I, when he fought Robert Whittaker... And he did like it was pretty shitty, like the throw he did. He got like an arm in, like, but he just muscled it down. And I was like, damn, he is strong. Wrong. So yeah. I think I think it's gonna be a hard fight for Izzy. Just with uh Drix's not just his like pace and pressure, but with his actual physical presence as well. Yeah, he sort of did like the yeah. Ronda Rousey like head and arm sort of like drag down. Yeah, but like, <laughs> yeah. Didn't, but like, it was it pretty awful. Mail, like, but yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was just like pure, pure strength. I don't think that was any technique yeah. at all, man. I yeah. think that was just pure fucking South African it is, fucking yeah, farmers. Yeah, work. South African fucking. <laughs> he, <just, laughs> he just forced it down, and then even his pressure on top. I was like, damn, like this guy is, yeah, he's strong as. Yeah, because like Riddick is like known for his like elite takedown defense and get ups. Yeah, like, he's not ever been held down like that before, but like. Yeah, freak it, man. Like he, he just yeah. had it down at will. Freak shit out that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, mm. yeah, I definitely think it's a scary fight for Adesanya, especially to come back after that Strickland fight. Who knows where his confidence is in the sport as well? Like, yeah, pretty, pretty bad performance and uh, pretty good performance by Strickland at least. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how he how he comes back. But but every time that Israel's like come back from like a loss like when he did yeah. against Pereira like you know he's always shown out so yeah I think he'll come back come back sharp yeah definitely and when you mm. do get your contract are you gonna like are you gonna go just because I, I think I've I've heard as soon as you get your contract you're allowed you, you've, you've given free access full-time access to the apex is that are you gonna go like just look around the apex and stuff like that when you get your contract just oh like the PI yeah, the PI. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is the PI part of the Apex or? It's next door. Okay. Yeah. I'm not that dumb. Okay. Yeah. The PI. Yeah. Yeah, because I was hoping to 
check out the the PI when we went over to do the um like the pre-production shooting stuff. We did all that at the apex, but we found out that we don't have access to the actual PI because obviously not actually contracted to the UFC yet. Yeah. So the next day I want to go check out the PI and you know they got a lot, bunch of recovery stuff in there. So if I got banged up shins and feet or sore hands from the fight, go in there and relax and you know just check out the facility. Yeah, man, I reckon that'll be cool. Mm. Yeah, I think they've got some yeah. great things there, man. Like they do food prep as well. Like they help yeah. fighters with even they they check if you can make like lower weight classes and stuff like that. Obviously, you, we we spoke about this before. You definitely you're not you're not making featherweight, but it is yeah, no, no way. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, interesting no that they yeah. can check if you can make weight classes healthy and all that sort of stuff. Like it, it it's a yeah. cool little thing they've built up. I feel like mm. yes, yeah, cause cool. uh yeah. I'm very interested to see the all the tech that's in there. Yeah, definitely. Some. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You should you should film a a video of you hitting the punch thing. See if you can break the. Yeah, I want to. I want to see where I match up. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, Terence McKinney. If you've seen him, he he got some pretty high scores on there just kicking it. Yeah. If, yeah. I feel like yeah, I think if fight. I kick it, it would be a a really good score. I know I got a pretty good. Like yeah, my roundhouse kick's pretty, pretty hard. So I'm interested to see the the power output I could produce on that thing. Yeah, definitely. And also, I think yeah. you versus Terence McKinney that'd be a really good fight for you as well if you've watched yeah. many of his fights before. Yeah, I just got to throw a flying knee, and it's done. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah exactly. it's like, <laughs> That it's seems to be knee. the the pattern. I'm just gonna <laughs> straight off the bat, flying knee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, weird, man. it's weird like you'd think you'd probably like fix that defensive hole after a while like he's been yeah. kneed in the head three times now it's uh yeah definitely a magnet for knees mm. and now head kicks as well now he's just being head kicked as well so he, he just yeah, he's so all just low body don't even yeah. need to throw a punch just gotta just gotta kick and knee him yeah maybe mm. you can get a fucking toe ko or someone on him as well as long yeah. as it touches <laughs> him, yeah. yeah that's it yeah, no, nah, awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'd I, like. I always mm. see fights, and I just I, I imagine you like fighting him, and I'd be like, yeah, that'd be a sick fight. Like, yeah, it's just a. I feel like the division's got so many guys that you could beat right now. Let alone when you get like yeah. even better. Yeah, I yeah, I totally agree. I can't wait to go in there and you know show off and in front of you know in front of the whole world. That's uh that's why I do this. Is what I you know it's what brings me energy and what excites me like going in and competing in front of lots of people is uh you know that really gets the heart going yeah and how is yeah have you like been practicing like in preparation have you been doing like uh have you been like fighting with just like you know nobody really around just to have like a quiet sort of atmosphere and stuff like that to prepare for like the quietness of the apex yeah we're going to be like sparring without music Usually we've got music blasting now. It's just going to be, yeah, just silence other than Ramel just yelling at us, which is going to be, you know, pretty similar to what it's going to be like on fight night. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the main, like, preparation. But I think in there, like, even when I fight at Eternal, I don't really hear much anyway. I only hear, like, Ramel. So yeah. I, I imagine it might be fairly similar maybe. But it might be eerily quiet anyway. So deal with it when it when the time comes anyway. Yeah, let's hope uh, Ramel know. hasn't. Yeah, let's hope Ramel hasn't lost his voice from uh, Cody's fight the weeks before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got at least he's got some recovery time in between. So yeah, exactly. If it was on the same card, yeah, he might lose his voice. So yeah, it might have the first like corner pull yeah. out for a fight <laughs> before your fight. He might, yeah, have to, he might have to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah medical evac yeah <laughs> yeah because um, he's loud enough as it is with a full crowd like at the eternal shows like you hear him through the screen like so when it's that going to be at the apex with you know a very you know quiet crowd everyone at home is going to be you know hearing Ramel yell out everything yeah, I think it was. I think it was yeah. Jill's fight, uh, the last eternal fight, and you could just hear him yeah. scream the whole yeah. fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. So you you always hear everything. Like when you're in the fight, obviously it's a lot going on. His voice just travels. So you know, no matter no matter what situation you're in, you're always going to be able to hear 
the instructions that Ramel's going to give out. So it's quite yeah. handy having a coach that that voice is, you know, quite strong and travels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like, yeah, that, that would be ideal. Yeah. I mean, it's better than having like a quiet guy you can't hear for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be tough, you know, with a screaming crowd and, you know, a high pressure situation. You've got the, you know, your coach whispering stuff. So, yeah, I got the, we got the good guy. Good stick. Has there been uh, many fights where it's been like Ramel and like Ben Vickers opposite each other? Because both of them are pretty fucking loud when they're, uh, you know, you, you guys are fighting. I feel like that'd be like, they, it'd be really hard to know who's going to win that screaming match because they're both very loud. Yeah. Uh, you can hear both. Yeah, of them. I've, yeah, I fought uh, a few fights against guys from Scrappy. So we've had Ben Vickers and, and Ramel in opposite corners. So it's a bit of a, you know, an unstoppable force meets a, immovable object you know like something like that <laughs> they just cancel each other out you can't hear anything yeah probably mm. it creates like a yeah. fucking sound like a black hole or something from in the fucking yeah yeah space <laughs> <time continuum>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's awesome man uh yeah no uh yeah I, i'm super excited for your fight man i'm pumped uh mm. for you to go in there get that contract bring some more fighters to perth you know you and you and cody absolutely deserve these opportunities and i think you're both going to excel uh i feel like there's much in your game you haven't even got to show off much as well i feel like yeah yeah i i feel the same there's a i've got a quite a few you know little tricks i'd like to you know show off in this fight so you know hopefully the the situations i get myself into i get to you know get to show out and throw some some cool stuff because I don't want to go in there and just do basic stuff. You know, I've got to, you know, you got to look cool for the boss. Yeah, definitely, mm. man. Uh, yeah. yeah and it, like, how, how's it going to feel actually meeting Dana? Like, you know, just seeing him in person, that's probably got to be like a weird feeling, right? Yeah. I imagine it'd be, it'd be weird. I think the first time meeting or seeing him, I imagine it's going to be as I'm walking into the cage, you know, I know where he's going to be, be seated. So, yeah, just going to be all, you know, just, you know, first impression is very important. So we've got to, got to throw some cool shit in that octagon. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. And like looking yeah. at, uh, do you reckon you will turn uh, Young into like a, a, a shooter? Do you reckon you're going to make him come with a wrestling game plan if you start like piecing him up a little bit or? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think so. I think the start, I'm going to be just touching him and I'm not going to throw too much like power, but I'm going to be at range throw lots of kicks i'm gonna yeah, just touch him up and i think he's gonna feel the the pressure of like getting getting like touched up and he's gonna need to do something so i think he's gonna be you know shooting just so he can actually grab a hold of me yeah definitely watching is yeah. i th actually think i did watch his last fight now that i'm thinking about it. i think i found it somewhere actually but he did wrestle he wrestled quite a lot in that fight uh yeah, like yeah, he came with a. That's the most wrestling heavy he's probably been in any of his fights. Yeah. So yeah. it probably he might try and do that. But I also noticed in his fights that he almost gets caught in triangles and arm bars and like, like he's very. He looks like his submission defense is like more just trying to like slam his way out of position. Yeah, like he's, yeah, I agree. He's like actual jujitsu part of his his game doesn't seem that strong, even like offensively. Like I've seen him on top of guys like. There's, there's positions where you should be able to really like dominate and control and even, you know, he doesn't really throw any subs out there. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see the the type of output he puts out. That's that's why I don't say even when we get into those wrestling exchanges, I'm not going to fear any like submission attempts. So I'll be able to take more like risks, which will actually make it more entertaining to you, when you can do yeah. – you know some cool like escapes whereas what i didn't feel when i fought like dom because i know he's quite sneaky and slick so i had to make sure when i was on my back i had to make sure i did everything you know picture perfect and not expose myself anywhere where i know with this guy i can you know i can take some risks and i know he's not going to be able to capitalize yeah definitely and uh who knows maybe we get back to back uh triangle chokes uh off your back uh, <laughs> That was a big shock to me when I put that on. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I just threw it up because I was like, fuck, i got to do something. I was on my back for 
a little bit too long and you know i know if it was just a jiu-jitsu match there's no way that would that would have happened because it was just like i just grabbed his arm and threw it threw it up like it was like <laughs> the most basic setup you can get but because we're in an mma fight it, shit like that just works yeah no nah, that was awesome I, I know you said you haven't been keeping as much uh up with the scene but did you see george mangos's uh submission over van heerden yeah i did yeah yeah we were actually on the plane coming back from from uh from vegas yeah i was like i didn't watch the whole fight like um jasmine had it up on her on her laptop i was asleep and I woke up to Ramel saying, like, he was, like, kind of screaming at it at the, at the laptop on the plane where everyone's quiet. <laughs> he was like, yeah. And I woke up and I, yeah, look at the screen and I, I just see, yeah, um, Mangos put a put a nice triangle on Van Heden. And I was so tired. Like, I just stayed awake. And as soon as Van Heden tapped, I just went back to sleep. <laughs> I was out. <laughs> I just stayed. I just literally woke up, watched the finish, and then I was – I was out. I was pretty cooked at that point. Yeah, I can imagine. Actually, now, now yeah. that you mentioned, I did see on uh, Jasmine's story, like, yeah, it's just uh, Ramel watching it on his laptop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was no, still awesome. saying, I tried to watch because we, I watched the, like, there was a couple amateur fights they were watching and I just couldn't stay up. And I was, I was at that point of the trip where I was just, yeah, too cooked and sleep deprived to be able to even, you know, stay awake for a second longer. And, yeah, yeah, but it was a cool I, setup. Last seen it, like uh, trying off the cage with flying triangles. Yeah, it's uh, what a way to win a title is, uh, you know, yeah. against a, a guy with like Van Heden, like just to throw up a nice flying triangle to get the belt. That's a yeah, what a cool way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and yeah. I actually I fell asleep during one of the amateur fights as well. No disrespect to the guy, but I, I fell asleep during Nima, I think his name is. I think that's the. Yeah, this guy. I fell asleep during that fight. Yeah, uh, just because a long day, but like, yeah, the hex. I don't know if it was the same for you guys, but the hex string was so fucked as well. Like hex kept just shutting down. Like, uh, the the string just kept like dying for some reason. Like, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it was it with. was the same around on our end too. Yeah, but because yeah. we were in the plane <laughs> with the with the internet connection, we just assumed it was because of that flying over the Pacific trying to watch, you know hex <laughs> so um yeah it seems like it was like that for everyone then yeah no you, you you're playing yeah. the wi-fi must have been fucking elite man the, the actual yeah wifi. it was pretty good it was pretty good <laughs> yeah it seems better than the wi-fi on the ground at this point yeah was that was that your first time going to the states yeah it was yeah how uh how was it just yeah just being in north america man like uh to get up to much besides you know doing the media and all that not so much just you know eating trying out some of the fast food restaurants over there and just like walking about didn't do like an an awful lot didn't really have time to do you know too much but it was cool it was just hearing the the accent it was just just i don't know if i'm gonna get used to that it's a uh, it's quite <laughs> it's weird like i can listen to it all day though i'm just like super intrigued when someone's talking and just with that yeah, with the accent, it's it's quite cool. That's the only thing that kind of not put me off, but made me feel like oh, okay, I'm not at home. But other than that, it seems the culture is pretty like it's not too different to like us because you know Western world. So yeah, it's not too it's not too different. Yeah, definitely. Did you did you get any no. skateboarding in while you were there, or not enough time? Nah, 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 nah. I'm, I have to hold myself back. I can't do that. I'm not I'm not gonna risk a an injury especially skateboarding man that's like super high risk of injury yeah, especially like rolled man. ankles and shit yeah no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna stay away afterwards though i'm i'll be keen to <laughs> shred it up at the skate park if i, I know we spoke when we spoke last time i talked about <laughs> jarlin turner like how he fights all the aussies but he yeah. actually he's a big time skater as well i don't know if you knew uh, yeah I feel like if you two have a fight, you could one round, you know, you two fight, then the second you're doing fucking yeah. skateboarding comp or some shit. Yeah, like we've got to have, to have to challenge him to a game of skate. <laughs> I think there's yeah, another like, guy like, that Talbot as well, Paddy Talbot, I think skates also. So, yeah, yeah, Peyton Talbot, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. so got to gotta have a – that seems like a cool video in the making, you know, UFC fighters who are traveling around, skating around, so 
That yeah, cool. I reckon once yeah. you get on like a win streak or something like that, you should do like a call out of like Jarlin Turner or something like that, and then be like, yeah. uh, and, and if you don't want to fight me in the cage, then let's have a let's have a game. <laughs> okay. meet at the skate park. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be in the cave, me in the skate park. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be that'd be fun. That'd be iconic. Yeah. I reckon that'd be a cool little call. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. plenty of plenty of skateboarders. So, what do you what do you do like in the meantime? Like the you know you, when you're not just training, what are you doing for fun, or are you just just completely focused on like recovery and everything? Yeah. Uh, what do I do? Like, I don't do fuck all, man. <laughs> I just <laughs> go home and either sleep or eat. I play lots of chess on my phone. I've been hell into that for the past like year or so. Sometimes I play some video games, but it doesn't hit like it hit like it used to when I was like, you know, in high school. I used to be like addicted yeah, to playing the Xbox. Now I just I just get bored of it easily. Yeah, and yeah. I'd, I'd say the most the thing I do most in my spare time would be play chess. Yeah. Well, that, that's uh, that's that's yeah. good, right, man. Like, that's good for the mind yeah. and everything. Like, that's good yeah. for reactions and everything as well. Like, that that's yeah. keeping you up. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's good. I like to play like the bullet or the blitz game, so it's pretty, you know, high high pace. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's, man. Sometimes I get so pissed off because <laughs> I get quite competitive now because it's got to the point where I'm not like awesome, but I'm I'm all right. So. I put a bit of pressure on myself to to win these games, and when yeah. when I fuck up, I get so pissed off. I <laughs> know <Yeah. laughs> uh, that's good. It shows your competitive spirit. Haven't you been? Haven't you no. been competing against some guys at like Lions Den or something like that in chess? Man, this is the story. I can be. <laughs> I didn't know Luke Pizzuti. Apparently, I had a game against. But at this time, I have proof my. My iPhone screen was messed up, all right? <laughs> this is my excuse, but it's true. It's it's 100% true. The left side of my screen was, like, didn't work, right? So I was I still just wanted to play chess, but I had to play every game down, like, seven points of material because the rook and the knight on the left-hand side of the screen and plus the two pawns as well, I couldn't use. So, and think all up, that's like seven points of material. I'm down. So my like chess score, my ELO went down so much. Like in my, it went from like being 700 to down to like 450. And I happened to catch <laughs> Luke Pizzuti in one of those games. And he had happened to screenshot because he won because I couldn't freaking use my pieces and now he has it on me so I'm, I'm i need to challenge him to a rematch and smoke him yeah we need that rematch uh <laughs> we need that rematch for it. sure. it's a call out for luke pizzuti in the game of chess <laughs> on a check checkmate inside 10 moves inside 10 moves checkmate honestly you, there should be like a <laughs> ufc like uh chess like tournament as well because you know al yeah. is like weirdly weirdly good at chess yeah like, yeah, it's, you, it's become quite a thing. It's actually quite like a, is it like common now? It's just a, yeah. People, there seems like a lot of people are getting into it. Yeah, well, I, f- I feel like it's it's just good and sharp for the mind. It's why, like you know, they used to say like you know, play like like it's like with el- old people, they used to make them do like word puzzles and stuff like that to keep their mind sharp. I feel like with chess, yeah. it's like the same thing to keep your mind sharp you know it, it will help with your reaction times and stuff like that because you're like yeah. you're thinking really on the move like is there a time limit yeah. as well for the digital chess you play <clears throat> yeah it is like, like i said i like to play like bullet or blitz so I either play like two minute game or three minute game which is on my favorite so pretty much each player has like three minutes of total time or two minutes of total time you're allowed to spend making moves so you got to be quite fast thinking and you know trying to make the correct moves under time pressure is, you know, it can be quite, you know, and quite <laughs> feel a lot of pressure. Would you ever, you know, maybe once you're retired from MMA and stuff like that, would you ever do chess boxing? Oh yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that, I'd that love be, to do that. <laughs> that would be so sick, man. I've, I've, I, there was I've, a period yeah. during, uh, during the pandemic and stuff like that. I was literally yeah. just staying up all night watching chess boxing tournaments, man. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's quite cool. Like, 
the two most was it like the gentleman's game it was like uh yeah chess and and boxing it was like mixing it together that's uh yeah it's pretty cool i'd like to try that one day when i hang up the, the mma gloves you might be the only one who can like win at both like you might be the most well-rounded chess yeah. boxer in the world man <laughs> I'm sure if you get a really good boxer to do it who knows nothing about chess, they could just, you know, win in the boxing match. So, yeah. What I did I know... Wanna, is... I still... Yeah. Go oh, ahead. no, sorry. You go on. You go on, sorry. Um, I'm, I was wondering how they... How it kind of works. Like, I, like, if you could stall in terms of, like, the like the chess. Like, if you didn't know much about chess and you're, like, wicked, you know, with the hands, like, just stalling with uh when you got like your the chess round you could probably stall and take ages to make a move and then there's pretty much a wait until the boxing round to really you know get going so i'll just i'm not too familiar with the the rules of regard to that i believe they have three minute chess rounds i believe it's something like that yeah. so they, uh, i've seen some where the guys will just take their time and move very slowly and then they'll just yeah, go yeah. The round and they will just fucking run through the chess player pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah i've seen some where it's like the guy's like definitely never boxed a day in his life like one of the guys he looked like a fucking like a professor at a university or something like that you know small yeah. guy uh not really like much muscle definition or anything like just doesn't look like a guy who's ever been punched before mm. and he absolutely got smoked in the boxing he yeah. he just sort of fought, def- fought defensively like he was just like whole- keeping a high guard the whole time but he was just getting boxed yeah. up pretty badly yeah I- I think if you're going to have one of those skill sets coming in into that, you'd, you'd rather be better with the with the hands than you are with the chess board. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Man. It's, yeah. it's funny. It's a, such a funny sport, though, because obviously chess uses your brain and stuff like that, and then you got the boxer just beating the fucking piss out of the yeah. chess <laughs> Yeah, you've beat him bad enough. He'd make all the wrong moves the next round <laughs> on the chess board, so give him a bit of brain damage. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like I know how they do like tailor the tape for like boxing and MMA for chess boxing. It should have like their fight stats and then like their IQs next to each other. I reckon they should. IQ yeah, the IQs before. their their chess elo, the chess score. Yeah. yeah, just before the fight and then afterwards they should like re IQ test them after they've been hit a few times. Yeah, to see if like their <laughs> IQs gone yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, just before we go, I just wanted to get uh, like just. You know, just your final prediction for this matchup. Uh, how do you think you're going to get it done? I I picture me knocking this guy out, either clean or TKO. I'm I'm pretty confident that I'm going to, you know, land a land a nice punch on his chin. Yeah, I, I could foresee like yeah. I, I'm imagining like very similar to like the bait, Blake uh, Donnelly type KO. Then I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's just what I've been been feeling like this whole time. Once I found out about the, my opponent watching this tape, I just have this eerie feeling that I'm going to get a you know, spectacular knockout. Yeah, man, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Uh, just before we go, like, is there any sponsors or anyone you want to shout out before we finish this up? Uh, we've had quite a few like sponsors jump on board for this fight camp. And it yeah, is for this fight, just being able to bring over the whole team. But um, I think we're going to do, like Jasmine and I, we're going to do like an actual individual thank you to to each one but you know for now you know everyone everyone who's helped out knows who you are and yeah thank you very much for your support guys yeah awesome and uh, hopefully you can get like a chess sponsorship or something i feel like that would be fucking awesome. yeah, I, yeah man. i'd love that yeah i'd love that looking for a chess sponsorship and also a, a butcher sponsorship if, uh, if there's any butchers around that want to give me a couple of steaks here and there i'd oh that'd be a dream come true yeah, definitely. Oh, actually, I want to ask one question. Yeah. I want to ask you, yeah. you've got the moustache and everything. Are you do you have Italian mm. heritage by any chance? Yeah, I do. Yeah, my mum's yeah. side is that. Yeah, Italian. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, because you, you look very Italian, and it seems like all the yeah. like, Italian, all the fighters from Perth have Italian heritage. It's something I've noticed. Uh, yeah, it's a big the Italian culture in Perth, quite yeah, quite large. Yeah, yeah, no, all the Italians like, around. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you, yeah. yeah, I guess all the like real tough Italians came to Perth as well. <laughs> yeah. More yeah, Italian that's it. Yeah, MMA that's where fight. the it's where the mustache genes come in as well. It's yeah, my exactly, natural man. ability to grow a good mustache. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As soon as I seen that mustache, I was like, he's got to, he's got to have some Italian heritage. Bit of wog in him. Yeah, got yeah, a bit of wog no. in me. 
Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, but, but yeah, like you, Urseg, JDM, all got all got all part Italian. So yeah, yeah. definitely not, not bad company to have. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, awesome, man. Yeah, I just wanted to we wanted to check that before, beforehand, especially yeah. butchers as well. A lot of good Italian butchers as well out there. Yeah, that's it. I want some. You know, I need some some steaks to help you know fuel me for this flight camp. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah I'm super excited to see how you get this one done, man. But yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, and yeah, you can't wait to see you kill it uh, September third in Las Vegas. Awesome. Thank you for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch up after you get the UFC contract, yeah? Yeah, easy. Looking awesome. forward to Thanks. it. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks so much for the chat, bro. See ya. Peace.